Hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to be uh, covering Chapter 3, Part 5 of our A-plus uh, Computer Repair Series, PC Repair Fundamentals, and this will complete Chapter 3. How to Troubleshoot a PC Problem Assume the attitude of an investigator. Really need to cal be calm, uh, try, to, try to open up your mind to everything possible, and just kind of be an investigator. Do not compound the problem. Make sure that you don't do anything that could compound the problem. Oftentimes, techs uh, get going too quickly, and sometimes uh, they'll miss information or cause other problems to compound the problem. Look at the problem as a learning opportunity. Every time you have a problem, it's an opportunity for you to learn something. Ask questions to help understand the problem. Believe that you can solve the problem. Again, remember you always have Google and use Google. I always like to research problems using Google to see what other people are doing to fix the same kind of problem. Google is my most important troubleshooting tool. Steps to solving a PC problem. Key advice. Ask good questions. Document the process. If there's a user that you can interview, talk to the user. See if there's something that they did. Four-step problem-solving process. Step one interview the user. Good, valuable information if you can find the user. Backup uh, data. Always back up the data before you do anything. You don't want to lose important data. Uh, can't overemphasize that enough. Oftentimes, techs get going too quickly and the data gets lost. Solve the problem. Step three. Step four, verify the fix and document the solution. Love to have those documents of those solutions. Uh, we put this in a very large database, and this helps other techs. So when they see the problem repeat itself, it might be several months before they've seen the problem again, it's nice for them to be able to go back and review the data, see what steps they took or what steps other people took to solve the problem. Very valuable resource, the, the, the documentation. Uh, here's a little diagram that's in the book. Uh, talks about the general approach for troubleshooting. Uh, troubleshooting a failed boot. It takes time to acquire troubleshooting skills. Uh, you have to be patient. It just uh, does take time. It takes experience. Hands-on training and troubleshooting a failed boot. Uh, anytime you have a, a, an opportunity to learn uh, and anytime you have a problem with your computer, look at it as an opportunity for learning. Uh, my computer won't boot. Uh, first step, uh, maintain your calm. Second step, second step, develop a good game plan on how to, how to solve this. Again, you're going to be an investigator. You need to gather information. Follow a good procedure. Plan is driven by a set of yes and no questions. There's a good example of this in the book. I would follow it, especially the first few times that you troubleshoot. Example, does the PC boot properly? Is it booting properly? That's a good question. If no, troubleshooter is directed to another question. If yes, the troubleshooter is directed to stop for now. Here is that chart, a uh, very good flow chart for uh, solving uh, computer problems. I would uh, I would use it, and uh, especially the first few times you go through a problem. Troubleshooting major subsystems uh, used for booting. Categories of troubleshooting steps. The electrical subsystem needs to be checked. Power supplies are becoming more of a problem uh, with computers. I, I seem to be replacing a lot of power supplies lately. And these are highly rated power supplies and uh, from very good companies. And still we're having failures. Sometimes it won't boot and it's just a power supply problem. Looks like the computer's on, but it's just not booting. Essential hardware devices. Motherboard, memory, CPU, video, uh, reading from the hard drive. These are all categories of troubleshooting steps. Uh, key aids, uh, tables, identifying any error codes that you might uh, come across. Now here's a good table. Uh, these are beep codes and their meanings. When a computer first gets through its power on self-test, it gives you one beep, meaning that the power on self-test completed successfully. If it didn't, you get a series of beeps, and these beeps will be beep codes for failures. Uh, depending on the uh, BIOS and the manufacturer of the board, beep codes could be different, but you can look them up. They're online. Uh, in summary, PC repair tools, uh, recovery CDs, real important. I would uh, strongly recommend you go through the series for making up your own 
uh, CD tools, your recovery tools. Screwdriver sets, post, what is post? I'll understand it. Cleaning pads, solutions, diagnostic cards, uh, preventive maintenance plans, uh, extend the life of your PC. If you don't have a preventive maintenance plan, make one up or put one together. Follow and organ, uh, follow an organization's preventive maintenance uh, plans or develop one if it does not exist. Might be your first, uh, first job when you first get assigned in an area. Uh, computers present chemical and electrical hazards. Uh, protect components from ESD, this electrical static discharge. Uh, big problem for computers. They're very sensitive to ESD. Uh, summary continued. Uh, assembling and reassembling a PC prepares a technician for actual repair work. It's a good exercise to go through. Startup BIOS uh, controls the boot process. Four-step BIOS process. Post is run. You get a beep if post is successful. Then you have your loading of your OS. The OS initializes itself and then it loads an application and executes it. Expert troubleshooters are always good question askers. They're always trying to gather information. Before tackling a problem, develop a game plan. Activities. I want you to explain uh, the steps for troubleshooting a PC. Discuss this and I want you to present it too. And then Labs 3.6, System Compatibility, and Lab 3.7, Evaluate and Upgrade. Also, there's some review questions I want you to turn in. Uh, that's it for this section, this chapter. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Bye for now.